morning. Uh, for those of you that were on YouTube with me this morning, thank you very much for hanging out. Uh, and here we are again. Jim Ninja Adkins, 26 Moves Self-Defense System and Adkins.life. We're discussing right now, um, excuse me, achieving your goals. And this is day five. Oh, I'm going to have to take a drink here. This is day five of our uh, six-day workshop. Excuse me one second. Um, it's morning. Got to get all those morning things in before the students show up, right? So what I'm doing today is we're going to review day four, which was take massive action. I'm going to tell you a story about uh, one of my friends, students, clients, whatever you want to call, that uh, did just what we asked. She started really started out really good. You know, she's in a tough situation in her, in her life. And what I mean by tough is there's some major changes going on and change is inevitable and change is good for the most part. Okay. Uh, change means that if, if you're letting something go, if something is ending, people have a tendency to, Oh, it's still terrible, but really it, it's an opportunity. And, and nine times out of 10, the opportunity on the other side of letting this go is going to be much better for you. Right? So we look at those changes as bad things most of the time. Now, I'm not talking about losing somebody that you love. That's, you know, that can be, that can be hard, but there's lessons to be learned there too. And there's things on the other side of that that are going to be wonderful, I promise you. So my friend, my client, my student, start, looked at this life change first as, oh man, this is going to crush me. Really, for the last two years, it's what they were looking for. It's what they needed in their life to happen. And they really, you know, really were unhappy with the situation. And as it started to change, they forgot that. They had to be reminded of it. And now they're, they're on board with that. So they set their goals. They, they you know what? It's not, I, I, wonderful things are going to happen now. I'm going to do this, 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 and this. Unfortunately, when they set the goals, they were ready to take massive action. They did everything right, but the massive action depended upon what happened. Well, okay, in their head, okay, I gotta set this right. In their mind, the massive action depended upon what the other person was gonna do. So when the other person acted not in accordance with my, student, my friend, my, you know, with her, um, she felt like all of her goals were squashed, just like that. And to be honest, and I hope she watches this, and she will, did you expect anything different from the other person, you know? And knowing that those goals are important to you, do you really think that their actions are going to stop you from achieving them? At the moment, it may seem as if the cards are stacked not in your favor. But I guarantee you, everybody watching, I guarantee you, anybody that wants to get on board here, I guarantee you, if you set a goal and it's congruent with who you are as a person and it's not hurtful to others and it doesn't count on or rely or depend on anybody else's actions. Okay, you follow me so far? And your reason why you want to achieve that goal is clear and powerful, compelling, passionate and strong. Nothing, nothing will stop you from achieving that goal. It will become a reality. It will happen. It's that powerful. It really is. I want you to think, everybody right now who's watching, think of a time. Actually, no, let's start, let's start now. Think of something in your life now that's amazing that you never thought was possible at one time. Maybe you live in that incredible house that you always dreamed about as a kid. Now, on this note, while we're doing this exercise, I want you to I want you to think about this. We get comfortable, we get complacent, and we fall into the trap of familiarity. And what I mean by that is the wonderful things that you have in your life now weren't always there. 
And if you don't stop to show gratitude and recognize them, what happens? They become familiar. This is just how it is. It's always been this way. No, it has not always been that way. You worked for this. It, you, you set a goal at one time and you pushed through. Whether it was because of the pain of not doing it or the pleasure of getting it done, you did it. So when you stop to think these new goals that you're working on are improbable or impossible, I want you to stop. And I want you to sit back and look at the incredible things that you have in your life now that you did not think were possible. The relationship that you always want or always knew you could always hoped that was out there. That's just one I hear a lot. Um, I have a relationship now that I always hope existed. I always wished that this type of relationship was out there. And then whammo, bammo, you, it's there like magic. Well, it's not really magic. There's a formula for it, a scientific formula and the art of, of fulfillment, right? There's a science of achievement and the art of fulfillment, as Tony would say. And um, trust me. You know, when you set out to find it, seek and ye shall, right? Right. Morning, Mr. Motley. Good. So these are real things. So, so she set her goals and this person, you know, responded. And you guys can probably guess what the situation is. I don't need to, I don't need to spell it out, but I'm going to still try and stay vague. Um, how are you doing, Tonda? Um, so as she looks at the, at the potential issues that this could create as her coach as her friend i remind her that this is not the setback this is not this is what happens when you set a goal um things will pop up to trip you up your 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 automatic thermostat inside you has a comfort level and if you change that comfort level and start reaching for better things unfortunately if you allow it that thermostat kicks on and brings you back to where you think you're comfortable, right? Um, and it happens subconsciously. It happens automatically. You've got to get out of your own way. So if you've got a strong enough reason for your goal, goals, and listen, I read your goals. I read the goals that everybody sent me. And wow, what a wonderful world these 12 people are going to be living in in the next six months, eight months, a year. It's <laughs> And what does that do to me? I'm a little, little selfish here. The reason I do this is a selfish endeavor, right? I get to be a part of their change. I get to be a part of that growth. I get to feel the exuberance. I get to feel the, the, the wonderfulness. Of the, I know it's selfish, but <laughs> it's a good feeling. So when you set your goals, and that's what we're talking about this six weeks as a goal workshop, and all of a sudden, Boom, something hits you. Oh, I can't ever do that. Or, you know, let's let's pick something funny. Let's let's I'm pretty good at analogies. Let's make up one. Let's say your goal is to drive a brand new off-the-line DeLorean. If you're not that old or you're not into cars, you don't know what a DeLorean is, right? Remember Back to the Future movie? The time machine was a DeLorean. And your goal is to drive a brand spanking new one off the off the assembly line in 2020. Is it going to happen? <laughs> no. Why? They stopped making DeLoreans years ago. They don't make them anymore. So is your goal to drive the brand new one or do you want a DeLorean? Or is it that you just want a brand new car that could take you back in time or forward into time? I don't know. So you've got to make your goals. I know it's kind of out there, but you got to make your goals congruent, have a good, strong reason, make sure the reason is really clear. Don't just kind of make up stuff. Well, because the DeLorean is really cool. You know, I give the analogy of the money. You know, people say, they set a goal is, I want more money. Well, here's a penny. That's more money. Now go. That's probably not what they meant, right? And I can tell you this about money. When people set a goal to have more money, it's generally not the money they want. Think about this. If you want more money, and all of us at times want more money, right? Want to get paid what we're worth. Well, I tell you, you're getting paid what you believe you're worth. But it's not the stacks of money we want. We don't want to go home and look at stacks of money unless you're the, <laughs> that guy, I don't, I don't know. But what we want is what the money will do for us, right? We want freedom. We want the feeling of no debt. We want the ability to set up income streams and help a bunch of other people. 
So it's not the money, it's what the money will help us achieve or get. The science of achievement, the art of fulfillment. Everybody's different, right? So set your goals, be clear on what it is you want. If you need help with clarity or if you need help with, with measuring and monitoring, reach out to me, I can help you. Um, any of you watching right now have a great story to tell about uh, something that you wanted to achieve Never thought you could, and it's in your life now. You know, just say I. Raise your hand, say I. I, I can feel you. Um, I can give you a, a long list. You know, whoever thought I would end up in Michigan? I'm an Arizona native, born and raised. Love Arizona. Love Arizona. Love Michigan. How did I end up here? You know, there's some funny connections, and hindsight's usually 2020. And I won't waste all your time with this, but this is fun stuff, right? When I was younger, now looking back, I can see this, okay? I had no clue when I was when I was younger. I had girlfriends. Imagine that, <laughs> right? And uh, it, it's okay. My wife knows. Um, and the girlfriends that I had, let's see, one, two, three, four, four of them. And I only had five my whole life maybe six, wink, wink. Um, but four of them that I can think of right now, and forgive me if I, I missed one of you, who were from Michigan and lived in Arizona. My Michigan girlfriends, yeah, there was just something about them, and I was drawn to them, right? <laughs> Is that weird? Um, and then I met Sarah. I, did, I met Sarah a long time. Sarah and I have been acquaintance friends since I think she was 13. Um, she used to live around the corner from where the band would practice. But so we've known each other for a long time. And uh, when we, when we got together and saved each other's lives, really, that's what she saved my life. Um, the thought of moving to Michigan wasn't there. The, the fact that she, when she told me it was from Michigan, didn't, you know, didn't do it for me consciously. I don't know, but the opportunity to move to Michigan was too strong. And let me tell you something. I always growing up saw pictures a big water and huge trees, huge trees, and love the trees. I just loved it. I was, in, I was, you know, why doesn't Arizona have big trees like that? And there are somewhere, some places, different types of trees. But as a kid, I remember, you know, the big giant pictures of trees and kids swinging in tire swings on trees. And I really, really wanted to see those types of trees. And then snow, you know, you, you snow and trust me, it's not, it's not great, but change of seasons is good. So. Things took place, and I don't want to go into great detail, in my life that led me to let go of situations in Arizona that I loved. I had hundreds, if not thousands of people there that I love and students that I was currently and actively teaching when we moved. The, the, the stimulation, and if you want to reach out privately, I can share with you why the actual and it was tough. I didn't just say, okay, we're going to move and then take off. That wasn't what happened. There was pressure. And it came in a wave that I feel divine intervention was involved. And when I got to Michigan, it wasn't just the trees I found. I found hundreds, if not thousands of other people here who I love. And I still have my Arizona people. Why? Because the world's not that big and travel is not as hard as you think it is. This makes it easy too. So I'm in Michigan. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thunk? Got big trees, got water, got grass, got big land, got the house that my wife dreamed of for a long time, um, got the truck that I, I know automobile is a little thing, but let me share this with you. Your reticular activating system and the law of attraction. When I was looking for a truck, I didn't want to Dodge. <laughs> Sorry, Dodge. And I'm not endorsed by anybody yet. Um, I didn't want to dodge. I'm a Chevy guy, right? Um, and even looked at a couple of Fords, Michigan Ford, but a Chevy guy. Drove a bunch of Chevys, got our first Jeep when we were here, um, ended up with a Dodge pickup. Loved it, except for the electrical problems. I don't know what it is with you guys. Dodge, come on, you think you can figure it out. Um, got a Ram. Loved it. Somebody told me to get a diesel. The big thing was diesel, and I had a giant Ram pickup. I loved it. It was me. 
So I looked into diesels and um, my reticular activating system kicked in and everywhere I looked, I saw Ram diesel, Ram diesel, Ram diesel, reached out to the Ford mechanic, the head mechanic of Ford, who was also a student of mine at one time and asked his advice. And he told me which Dodge diesel to get and which Fords not to get. There are some great Fords too, don't get me wrong, but um, this is the one he told me to get. So specifically, a 2013 Dodge Ram 6.7 dual tw twin turbo diesel 2500. Fixed the wiring Dodge, yes. Oh, is that what did that, Mr. Motley? Hang on, did that burn your was the wiring the reason your truck caught on fire? <laughs> um, I hate to laugh, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So, anyway, in my head, I've got this picture of this Dodge pickup that I'm looking for, I know what year it is, I know what model it is, and within three months, it pops up for sale. Three months. I wanted it, I'm looking for it, and boom, in the smallest little town, in the little dealership, and there it was. And I went, and I test drove it for about 15 minutes. That was it. And I wrote the biggest check for a vehicle I've ever written. And now I've got my dream truck and it's me. If you haven't seen a picture of it, you know, it's the, it's the one people look at and go, Oh, he's trying to compensate for something. No, I'm not. I'm enjoying the hell out of being sitting up above looking down at you. Not <laughs> anyway, um, we live in a place where it snows, have a four wheel drive. Um, Mr. Molly, who's a student of mine, bless your heart, sir. I'm sorry. Um, and it's not funny, but he's, he had a Dodge pickup too. And his Dodge pickup just caught on fire. I saw a picture of it sitting in the middle of the road, burnt, gone. And when I mentioned wiring, you see his comment on here. He commented, fix the wiring dodge. And um, he thinks that's probably what caught it on fire. Mine will yell at me. My remotes, I'll lock it and walk away, and the alarm will go off. And I think it has something to do with Bluetooth. I really do. And the remote start won't work sometimes. And, some, and it's a new truck an expensive truck and sometimes you turn the turn signals on and they do what they want to do um, and here's a funny thing if you're a chevy guy chevy 350s and what's going to happen come on chevy people you know what it is what is it the water pump right water pump's going to go out power steering pump's going to go out in that order if you take care of your vehicle it just happens you know what's going to happen well if you're a ford guy what happens ford people ford people know there's some issues with the wiring and the, not the wiring but the the firing the firing of the the order of the firing in the the cylinders right for um if you're a dodge person you know their wiring is crazy now how long have these car makers been in business and uh, if chevy's wiring isn't messed up and if dodge's water pump and power steering pro don't have problems and neither one of them have a firing order issue at time. Why can't they get together? Well, I think it's called a secondary aftermarket um, product replacement income stream. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just ranting. All right, I love you guys. Off here, I got a black belt candidate coming in this morning. She's, uh, by the way, our black belt test is October 19th. For those of you that are interested, and I've only got two candidates on the floor testing for black, but I do have uh, one third degree candidate who's been testing for the last four months and another potential third degree candidate who hasn't stepped up to do what he needs to do yet, but it's not a race. And um, you know, stay tuned for that. We'll, we'll put that on here. All right. So this was day, <laughs> did we talk about day four at all? I don't know. I love talking to you guys. This is day five of the six-day um, workshop on setting goals. Day four was about taking massive action. What massive action did you, I'm sorry, what massive action did you take toward achieving your goal? If you didn't, what massive actions can you take when you start to achieve your goal? Um, let me know. I, I want to know what massive action. I did, I, I read your goals. I'm totally on board, and tomorrow when we talk about uh, hiring a coach or hiring an expert, I'm going to share with you my experience in working with Tony Robbins. I'm going to share with you my experience working with my daughter's company and Ben Oliver, who's my, my nutrition coach right now. 
I will share with you uh, working with some of my students who are professional training coaches. I have doctors. I have a lot of experts that we can talk about. And then I'll share with you what I do, what I've been doing for the last 20 plus years as a professional coach, as a business consultant, as a life and health coach, and uh, what we really do. And if you're local, uh, Fenster's back on the air. If you know who that is, if you're local, you know who Fenster is. Uh, WLDR 101.9, I think is what it is. I will be sharing the airwaves with Fenster on the 17th of this month. So I'll be on radio, and you guys can listen to it online if you want. WLDR, uh, Traverse City, and I'll be on the air, I think the whole morning with him on the 17th, talking about what we're doing here. All right, I love you guys. Uh, hit the ground running. Let's go. Share, share some more stuff with me. I know it's, it's, it's a selfish endeavor, but I love it. And I will share with you whatever you ask. I really will. You ask a question. Let's do that. Tonda Finn, it's, it's, I, it's good to see you on here, Tonda. It really is. I love this kind of stuff. Um, let's start this. Ask the coach. Let's start a morning um, question and answer thing. Starting next week, I have another workshop we're going to talk about, but let's let's do send me questions. Ask the coach, and they can be questions you normally pay you know five hundred bucks an hour for, but ask me, and let's let's have fun doing this. All right, you guys, have fun. You know what I say? Um, on top of I love you, here comes Marianne Johnson's on your mark, get set, 